As I've mentioned in a few of our recent videos, we're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers before the UK is set to leave the EU at the end of March. We're doing pretty well, but we want to be able to beat the UK. Make sure you subscribe, and if you already have, click the bell icon to make sure you stay up to date with our latest videos. When people in the UK talk about a no-deal Brexit, they often only consider how a no-deal would affect the UK. In the past, we put out a few videos covering all the different ways that the UK could be impacted. What people in the UK consider less is how EU nations and citizens would be affected. So in this video, we're going to look at the effects of a no-deal Brexit on the rest of the EU. If you're a Brit wondering why this even matters, I'd ask you to consider this. You probably heard, maybe even from us, that both sides are keen to reach a deal. As all involved parties want to reach an agreement, both sides may be willing to make compromises and concessions in order to make that happen. So therefore it's important to know how much the EU actually wants a deal. How much does it fear a no-deal Brexit? So today we're going to separate this video into the five core elements that reflect the primary ways that the EU will be impacted by a no-deal. And as such, the five main reasons that the EU might want a deal. These are the immediate disruption to trade, the long-term economic effects, the effect on the EU budget, citizens' rights, and the issues surrounding Ireland. So to start, let's look at how a no-deal Brexit would affect the EU immediately after March 29th. At that time, the UK would immediately become a third country and start trading with the EU under World Trade Organization terms. Because of this, the EU has said that it expects to perform more customs and regulatory checks on the UK. Some UK qualifications which would previously be accepted in the EU would no longer be valid, and as such, some goods will need more checks if they're to be exported to the EU. The EU would also require more customs forms to collect the duties placed on certain goods in accordance with WTO schedules. There's been some speculation, notably by Lord Lilly, that no checks would actually be required. But according to the European Commission's paper on the probability of a no-deal Brexit, the European Union must apply its regulation and tariffs at borders with the United Kingdom as a third country including checks and controls for customs, sanitary and phytosanitary standards, and verification of compliance with EU norms. People are worried about this increase in checks, as it will affect the flow of goods between the EU and UK, which will impact supply chains, and the EU has even said that it expects significant disruption. In the event of a no-deal Brexit, France expects to deploy an additional 700 customs officials by 2020, concentrated mainly in UK-facing ports like Calais and Dunkirk. Germany expects to hire another 900, and the Netherlands expects to hire another 900 customs officials, as well as 145 more veterinarians for phytosanitary checks at the port of Rotterdam. The French government is also planning the construction of border inspection posts at Cherbourg, Calais and the Channel Tunnel which will require a whole lot of new infrastructure to cope with the checks and delays. Ireland, the Netherlands, Belgium and Denmark have also set up online platforms to help businesses that rely on UK goods to cope with a no-deal Brexit. The EU itself has done some things to try and smooth over issues in anticipation of a no-deal Brexit. The EU has said that they'll allow UK flights to fly between the UK and EU, but not between member states, for nine months and the EU will allow current road haulage certificates for 12 months to help trade flow as much as possible. The EU has also said that while the UK financial firms are losing their passporting rights, there will be a 12-month facilitation period for the financial sector where the EU will commit to as much equivalence as possible. So that's how a no-deal Brexit will immediately impact the EU. Disruption to trade, a lot more customs officials, and some special provisions for flights, haulage and finance. But what about the longer term economic consequences? According to the International Monetary Fund, the EU can expect a 1.5% loss in growth by 2030 if the UK leaves with no deal, with Ireland expecting a 3.8% loss, the worst in the EU, only slightly better than the 4% the UK is expected to lose. As this diagram shows, the effect of the UK leaving with no deal is negative across EU countries. That's because many European industries rely on British customers, who won't have the same access to their products as before. For example, the UK is the third biggest market for French agriculture, and Germany sells 800,000 new cars to the UK every year, 20% of their total sales. 
However, while a no-deal Brexit would be bad for French farmers and German manufacturers, it also means job losses in the UK, for people who are employed in those sectors. No deal might present some benefits to EU countries, such as increased real estate prices in Frankfurt and increased investment in Parisian finance. But for the most part, it looks like a no deal Brexit would be bad news for the EU. The impact would be lessened if the UK remained close to the EU. The International Monetary Fund estimate that if the UK and EU operate under the no deal WTO terms, then in the longer term, the EU 27's economic output would be reduced by 1.5% of GDP. If they were to strike a free trade deal with the UK, then the reduction in economic output would be limited to 0.5%. However, the best result for EU27 is if the UK remains part of the European Economic Area, following a so-called Norway model. This would lead to the EU's output being almost unaffected, reducing only very slightly. Another reason why the EU doesn't want to see a no-deal Brexit is because of the hole it would leave in the EU budget. In the worst case scenario, the UK leaves the EU on the 29th of March and doesn't honour any of its existing financial commitments to the EU. As a result, the EU would stop all investment in the UK, and the EU 27 countries would be left with a 16.5 billion euro black hole in its budget until the EU budget is reformulated in 2020. This would slightly be offset by the customs duties that the EU would be able to collect on UK trade, with that earning an estimated 800 million euros, but it would still leave a pretty big hole. However, the EU wouldn't be forced to legislate to solve this problem. EU law allows it to raise money to the value of 0.26% of national income, in order to provide room for manoeuvre in the case of unforeseen needs and emergencies. And the 16.5 billion euro black hole only represents 0.066 of the gross national income. However, making up the 16.5 billion euro shortfall would still require pretty huge contributions from the remaining member states. For example, Germany would likely have to pay an extra 4 billion euros, and France another 2.5 billion. The UK pays about 16 billion euros into the EU each year, which accounts for about 13% of the EU's budget, placing the UK as one of 10 net contributors to the EU. The UK leaving with no deal would mean that other countries would have to pay more in future EU budget cycles. And while some countries such as Finland have said that they'll be happy to do so, others obviously would rather not. If there is a no deal, then the nearly 4 million EU citizens living in the UK would have to apply for settled status. EU citizens would have the right to settled status, provided that they started living in the UK before the 31st of December 2020, and live in the UK for a continuous five-year period. Once an EU citizen has secured settled status, they have the right to apply for British citizenship if they're eligible, work in the UK, use the NHS, enrol in education or continue studying, gain access to public funds such as benefits and pensions if they're eligible to them, and travel in and out of the UK. Initially, the UK government said that they were going to charge EU citizens to apply for settled status. However, after parliamentary objections, the fee was dropped altogether. That being said, the same benefits won't necessarily be afforded to UK citizens living in the EU, with their rights depending on which part of the EU they're living in. Individual member states get to decide exactly how they want to treat UK citizens, and while the EU has asked them to take a generous approach, they can't actually guarantee any social security. This is obviously a big worry for UK citizens living in the EU, and if you want to know more about it, there's a campaign called In Limbo, which is all about guaranteeing UK citizens' rights in the EU. So to those people who say all we do is relentlessly promote our own videos, there's a promotion for someone else. And while you're looking at that, make sure to subscribe and I'm, I'm joking. One of the big talking points, not just with No Deal, but with Brexit more generally, has been the island of Ireland and the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Before we go on to the border more specifically, let's have a look at how Ireland is preparing for a No Deal Brexit. The Irish government has committed to hiring around 1,000 additional staff members. This includes up to 700 staff for customs control, 200 veterinarians for sanitary and phytosanitary checks, and 120 additional officials for export certification as part of the Contingency Action Plan, which includes proposed infrastructure changes to Dublin Port and Rosslare Europort to implement the necessary customs checks between the UK and the island of Ireland. However, they haven't said anything about how they're going to enforce customs checks on the Irish land border. 
because, well, nobody has any idea. If the UK leaves with no deal and begins trading with the EU under WTO rules, no one knows what will happen to the Irish border. Theresa May and her government have said that there'll be no hard border, and the European Commission said that there'll have to be one, so that the customs union can remain effective. Otherwise, third countries could use Northern Ireland as a backdoor into the EU single market. Because of this, the border between the UK and Republic of Ireland would likely suffer many of the same problems that will exist on the sea border between the UK and EU. Complex regulations and customs procedures could make trading and working across this border time-consuming and expensive. So there's a variety of reasons why the EU might be worried about the potential of a no-deal Brexit. From the short-term impact on trade, to longer-term financial implications, the budgetary issues, the status of EU citizens, and the issues surrounding the Irish border. As time goes on, we'll see the EU strategy continue to play out. Some suspect that the EU is so resistant to a no-deal, that as a no-deal Brexit becomes increasingly likely, they may be willing to offer exceptions and cut the UK a better deal. This is one of the reasons why some British politicians are refusing to take the possibility of a no-deal Brexit off the table. If they remove the chance of that outcome, then they're throwing away chips which could be very useful in future negotiations. However, the EU has stuck to their ground pretty well thus far. Maybe even in the face of a no-deal Brexit they won't budge, and will stick to their current policy of no renegotiations. To make sure you find out exactly what happens next, and what the EU and UK's plans are, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us across all of the major social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. Special thanks goes to our Patreon backers, whose donations make running this channel possible.